everyone, today I'm going to do a uh, quick video on picture styles and custom color profiles on the Phantom. I'm going to do two things. I'm going to do um, for video, how do I shoot my video, what are the settings that I use? A couple of people have asked that. And then um, with photos, what do I do? And largely, whenever I'm shooting with the Phantom, I like to get a nice flat look. So I shoot in a, um, I shoot in D-Log with a custom color profile. It's basically no sharpness. I turn the contrast down by two. I turn the saturation down by one. And I find that using that, I can color grade really well after the fact and get a great picture. I'm gonna go through the different types of color styles that are available, show you some of the options. And then in photos, I always just shoot in raw so that I can take it into Lightroom later or into Photoshop and I have the most latitude whenever I want to, um, whenever I want to edit. But I'll take some raw pictures, we'll set them on raw plus JPEG, and then later on, on the next video, I'll bring them into Lightroom, we'll do some editing there so that we can see. So uh, to get started, I'm going to record the screen of the, of the DJI GO app so that I can show you what's going on, and uh, we'll get started. Alright, so to get started here, I've got the Phantom, I've updated the home point where it is, I'm just at a little park here. I'm going to run through the app a little bit right now. So whenever I'm um, flying and I'm going to do video, obviously I set it to video. I open up the menu here because I know that it's bright once we get up. So let's go to 60 frames a second. Like I said, I want to keep my, uh, <clears throat> my, shutter, my shutter speed at twice what my frame rate is. So since I'm going to shoot 1080p, 60 frames a second, I want to keep my shutter speed at 1 1 20th of a second. So you can see here are my settings. So I'm ISO 100, 1 1 20th of a second. Right now it says that I'm two stops under, but it's also pointed at the shade. Then you can see that I uh, am set it at 1080p, 60 frames a second. Let's go ahead and take off. The home point has been updated. Take off. All right. So if I come into menu and I go to style, right now it's set to just standard. I want to go down here to my custom. I'm going to actually go ahead and change the custom. So I'm going to go, I leave the sharpness at zero. I'm going to change my contrast to minus two. I'm going to change my sharpness to minus one. And I'm going to come back over. And then for color, I'm going to choose D-Log. You'll see you get a really flat picture here. So let's go ahead and start recording this. I'm going to run you through the different color types that there are. So let's get up. Actually, this would be great today because there's a bit more, there's a bit more clouds in the sky than there has been lately. So we'll just bring it up here. Great clouds in the sky today. Okay, so this is right now D-Log on my custom color type. So I'm gonna stop this clip. I come over here, I'm gonna press menu. Then for color now, let's go ahead and change it to Cine-like. So once I change it there, and then let's record this, I'm just gonna basically stay in the same place so that you can see the difference in colors as we change each one. So this is Cine-like. A little bit more color, a little bit more greens. You can see the blues, it's not quite as flat. Let's go back over here to menu. We'll choose none. None basically looks about the same, so I'm not gonna even show it here. And if we go to art, see that art actually gets really flat. So there we are. I don't know what the art um, one is supposed to emulate, if it's fine art or something. It doesn't really resonate with me why, why it's called art. That's just me though, maybe with you it does. If it does, comment below if you have a reason why it's called art. I just don't see it. We can go from there to uh, black and white. I probably wouldn't shoot in black and white because if I wanted to do the black and white, I would just convert it in post and then color it however I wanted it black and white. So I would just shoot in the D-Log and then I would convert it later to black and white. And now the next one, which is vivid. If you're just gonna go out and you're gonna shoot and you're not gonna do any color correction afterwards, I think vivid is a little heavy handed, but you'll see a major difference here. 
Vivid almost produces an HDR-like picture, but if you're just gonna go out and you're gonna shoot, you're not gonna do any color grading, nothing like that afterwards, then Vivid might be the way for you to go because you're gonna get a nice poppy picture, lots of color, lots of saturation. And then um, you can kind of see the area around here. So let's get it back pointed to us and I'll show you what you can do if this Vivid is too much or maybe you want it even more. I don't know why you'd want it more. It's already really, <laughs> the color pops like crazy. But let's um, bring the Phantom back. So now we can go, if we want to change the color style on this particular one. So come back over to menu. Now we'll click on style. And here we can go ahead and change. So if we go to like to landscape, you'll see a change there. So the colors are going to get a bit more contrasty, a little more um, saturated there than they were just a minute ago under just vivid. Hi. Hello. Hi. Oh, I'm doing a video right now. I don't know. I don't know. All right, so let's stop this one. Now, if I look in here, so I've got the different color types. So right there, we put it to vivid, which is where we are. We went back and we set it landscape by hitting the style here. And then I can edit that style to however I want to edit it. And that's the main stuff about video. Now, if I want to go into photos, I want to take photos. So like I said, we'll go into menu here. I'm just going to really quickly choose JPEG plus raw, but I'll run you through this for photo. I always do a single shot. I don't use any of the other built-in modes. I, uh, for image ratio, I keep it at the native 4x3. I don't want to crop the sensor at all. I want it to be the regular aspect ratio. Image format, I always just shoot raw because raw gives me the most ability to edit. And then um, that way I can push it as much as I want in post by tweaking shadows, color, all of that. But for the... Oh, ma'am. No, I'm working. Yeah. I'm working right now. Thank you. I'm... Uh, <laughs> So I've got a JPEG plus raw. That's what I'm gonna shoot right now so that we can then take each image. We'll get two, we'll get a JPEG image of it and we'll get a raw image. And then I'll take those on another video into Lightroom and show you the difference of how you can edit them and how much more latitude a raw image will give you. So let's just take a few images here really quick. Here's, here's the other interesting thing. Let's go back to uh, here. So if I've got these styles, right? So like right now we're on landscape and I'm on vivid. This is going to affect the JPEG. This isn't going to affect the raw file. The raw file is going to um, just record the raw data. It doesn't apply any processing. The JPEG is where it does some processing of its own to create a final file, and that's the JPEG. And not file in the sense that you can't edit it, but it is missing a lot of information that the raw file is. The raw file is just the data that was there that was captured, the light data that was there, captured to the sensor, and then you can do whatever you want with it where the, um, the JPEG has got some processing to it. Just in case you don't know, as soon as I hit 750 subscribers on here, I am giving away a custom Go Professional Phantom 4 case with custom foam cut inside. You can take a look at that and the cards that are on the right hand side. But other than that, have a great day. You keep watching, I'll keep making videos. Thanks a lot.